So why are cloud architects one of the best paid jobs in the country right now? And if so, why can't we find any good ones? Let's talk about this. Welcome to the Cloud Insider, where you hear about the reality of cloud computing and expanding use of generative AI. I'm your host, Dave Lenticum, author, speaker, cloud computing thought leader, tech exec, and VLIS geek. Let's start the discussion. Well, this comes from a uh, article I just wrote uh, in uh, InfoWorld. Some of you may see, and I posted it uh, early this morning, uh, talking about why cloud architects are paid well, and if so, why can't we find any of them? And what can enterprises do to ensure that they have the right talent to build the cloud solutions that they need to take them to the future in digital AI? And certainly with the advent of generative AI, this is gonna become a more pressing issue. So this came from a survey, Skillsoft's IT survey, um, and uh, they, they looked at the majority of IT workers earn more in 2023 than in 2022. Indeed, the average annual salary has increased in 2023 by $20,000 uh, in this according to the survey. And I'll post this survey uh, in the uh, comments below or post the survey in the notes below. So make sure you check that out. Also, make sure you check out uh, the post I wrote about this on, on uh, InfoWorld. So the what we're finding right now as the demand for cloud computing architects are people who understand how to configure the technology properly to build cloud solutions that are optimized for the business, as we talked about here a bunch of times, they just can't find folks with those skills. They can find architects that have skills in particular brands of clouds, like they may be AWS cloud architects, they may be Google cloud architects, maybe Microsoft cloud architects, and those are well and good, but ultimately the ability to bind the existing enterprise systems with the cloud computing uh, architecture, the transformations that are going on, integrated with, dig with, uh, with digital enablement and generative AI systems is a skill that really not a lot of people have out there. And if you look at the reason why, it's that Educational systems typically aren't focusing on the role of architect. The architects normally come up through the ranks through a career. I'm an architect by trade and just got a lot of different skills, a little bit of networking, a little bit of databases, a little bit of AI, all this stuff over time, then found myself in the role of looking at the value of all these technologies and producing the right configuration that's going to allow these technologies to, again, bring the most value back to the business. And that obviously takes years and years of experience to go through the rigors of doing that. You're a developer for a time, you're uh, uh, a database person for a time, you're doing lots of different jobs. So most people uh, haven't gone through that, and yet we're still asking them to do very complex things and understand holistically about lots of different technologies out there. And that's why the role is so scarce. So what's going on is that projects are being halted and enterprises are telling me that they can't progress any further because they can't find the talent that they need, the cloud architects that they need, the generative AI architects that they need, the enterprise architects that they need to take their infrastructure to the next level and even get on the path to removing lots of technical debt and optimizing the existing systems and really moving forward and making the right decisions in terms of how we're going to make all these things work and play well together to create more value within the business. And, and that's something that's going to be a, a frustrating thing for them for the next few years, because the demand for architects or technology skills in general, not just architects, is going to be here and the supply is going to be here. So what's happening is a few things. Um, number one, demand is exceeding supply. And so in other words, everybody needs cloud computing architects and there's not enough around them, so they're stopping productions. And the architects are obviously are getting paid more because there's fewer of them, and that's kind of the way uh, salaries work. If uh, they can't find you, they're going to raise the salary to attract you to work for them versus other folks. Um, that's a little concerning for lots of enterprises because they didn't expect to pay uh, inter uh, cloud computing architects uh, between two hundred fifty and three hundred thousand dollars, and many of them are making that much money now, and probably well deserved if they're making the right decisions and therefore adding value within the enterprises for directing them in the right way. So there's a good and bad here. Uh, obviously, I'm an architect. Um, it's good to be in demand. If you're watching this, you could be an architect as well uh, and understand that it's a very complex array of technology sets and patterns that we have to consider and align them in the appropriate way to, you know, in essence, create something that's going to be uh, either a micro solution, something that's just going to solve an application level problem, or a macro solution, something that's going to look at the enterprise in general, not just cloud-based systems, and make the right choices in terms of which cloud systems to leverage, which enterprise systems to leverage, whether something should be on-premise 
or in the cloud, and those are starting to come up more and more. Uh, and it's something that's going to be an ongoing art, you know, kind of more so than science. Of course, the downside and what enterprises are telling us is that production has ceased in many instances because they can't find the talent that they think they need to take the enterprises to the next level. Obviously, you can use consultants, and certainly consulting is a an option, and those are normally very smart people who come in and assist you. Normally, a bit more expensive than an employee, but and also they're not typically going to be permanent. They're going to be there for a certain amount of time, and they're going to roll off. So someone who's going to be implanted in the organization that is looking out for you, has a deep understanding of what you're looking to do, and is a, a constantly focused on aligning the right technology patterns is something that enterprises need and something that uh, is going to be more difficult to find. So what does this mean to the business? Well, uh, it means that uh, we have to get a little bit more clever at how we're going to build and hire people. I don't think this is as much of a demand problem. Demand's always going to go up and it's going to go down, you know, based on people's consumption of technology, in this case, cloud computing technology. And obviously, it's going to spin off into generative AI technology. That's always going to be the case. Businesses need to be clever in terms of how they fill those roles, in terms of how they learn to recruit and build the talent. I don't think this is a uh, issue with uh, college and universities and training programs um, that are not push pushing out the right people uh, are in the in the right levels of uh, uh, talent that they need. And so, in many instances, I find that enterprises are blaming colleges and universities and the training programs for not producing the number of technology professionals, in this case, architects, that they need to solve their issue. This is a supply chain problem. So ultimately, companies need to look to themselves in terms of how they're going to train their existing staff, how they're going to recruit differently, how they're going to recruit to build folks who are able to step into the architecture role or any other IT role for that matter. And the fact that we're not going to find in many instances architects that are ready-made to come into the organization and take on that responsibility, it may be something where we invest in somebody, we build their skills, and then grow them into position over time. And so the ability to kind of look at this where you're looking years out instead of just a few months out is a skill that I think enterprises need to make. Or they're going to find themselves behind the curve in terms of not getting the talent that they need to build the things that we need. Anyway, what do you think about this? So comments below, uh, let me know uh, how, what you think about the uh, ongoing struggle to find the right architects, the good and bad aspects of this, where this is likely going. Also make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, don't forget about my InfoWorld blog and uh, see you there and looking forward to the next time. Cheers.